handle the dark side of politics, the GOP's MAGA lie machine. And, you know, Hitler's uh, propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, uh, famously told the Fuhrer, repeat a lie often enough and it becomes the truth. And Trump and the MAGA faction of the GOP have really clearly taken Goebbels' advice to, to heart. Uh, they have been so effective, they have been lying so often and so effectively that nearly all Republicans and majorities or near majorities of Americans actually believe the Republican lie that we're in a recession, when in fact right now we're in better shape than any time since the 1960s. Inflation last month was zero. Ronald Reagan never got up below 4.1% in his entire eight years. So they believe this Republican lie that we're in a recession, that the, the economy is crap. They, repeat, they believe Republican lies about crime being up. It's actually down dramatically, not just since Trump, but uh, since the 1990s. They believe the lies that Democrats want elective abortion up to the moment of birth. No Democrat has ever said that. They believe Trump's lie that the 2020 election was stolen from him by voter fraud. They believe Trump's lies that the southern border is wide open. They believe the Republican lie that Social Security is on the verge of bankruptcy and must be saved by privatization or benefits cuts. Really, all we need to do is just raise the cap, you know. Uh, they believe their vicious lie that queer people are pedophiles targeting America's school children. And the NRA lie that more and more deadly guns will keep our kids safe. Bump stocks are going to make us even safer, right? Hey, you can spray 800 bullets in a minute now. That's really going to keep us safe. By the way, I think that the uh, conservatives on the court made that decision because they are, at least a couple of them, are fully expecting a civil war in the United States. Clarence Thomas's wife has made this very clear, and Sam Alito's wife is right on the edge of making it very clear. So now the, 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 the guys with the AR AR-15s, which is, you know, more Republicans than Democrats, I can guarantee you, they're going to be far more deadly than they were before in this fantasy civil war that these conservatives have concocted. Anyhow, it's also migrated to congressional Republicans. You know, Mark Elias noted this in his Democracy Docket newsletter. Um, he wrote, over the last month, you can feel that something important has happened. A, a tipping point has been reached of some kind. And, uh, oh, hang on just a second. Uh, Republicans who used to act like they hadn't heard or read the latest Trump outrage now show up at his trials and parrot his most vile lies. The GOP is now openly extolling the virtues of political prosecutions and disparaging the rule of law. Even Republicans on the Supreme Court have gotten into the act. Uh, I mentioned the bump stock decision. Clarence Thomas was so audacious as to insert this naked lie in a Supreme Court decision, quote, the shooter must release and reset the trigger between, between every shot. No, I'm sorry, you just hold your finger down and that thing sprays bullets. As uh, George Conway said, the Republican Party has become addicted to lies under Trump. You know, when, when historically we've trusted our politicians to tell us the truth, we've generally believed that they would tell the truth. When Kennedy debated Nixon in 1960, Nixon, you know, they, there was a, and in fact, in my article, there's actually the clip from the Kennedy-Nixon debate that you can just click on and listen to, listen to it play. And it's fascinating because uh, Nixon says, the, you, know, I, you know, I have met Negro mothers and their children. And I think that, you know, and he goes into this whole thing about how he's going to, when he becomes president, he's going to call up the people that run the lunch counters down south and ask them to let black people sit at their lunch counters. And they will, they will respect the president, Nixon says. And then Kennedy comes in, they say, Senator Kennedy, what do you say? And, and Kennedy comes in and he goes, that's nonsense. He said, it's gonna take the force of government to force these people. These, these people have been racist for 200 years. They're not gonna change next week. So anyhow, it's, uh, you know, we, we, but Nixon, I think, honestly believed that maybe he could jawbone this solution. And Kennedy honestly believed that force of government was necessary. And history, of course, proved him right. When Reagan sold us massive budget-busting, debt-creating tax cuts for the morbidly rich, 
I believe that Reagan actually thought that they, you know, the prosperity would trickle down. I mean, this had been a meme on the Republican side since, well, since the 1890s, actually, the horse and sparrow thing, you'll recall. So, excuse me. The one thing that uh, COVID gives me is a little bit of a runny nose, apparently. So anyhow, Reagan promised that this was going to work, and, and, you know, people believed him. I mean, they believed him so much Reaganomics is still in place. We, we have not yet raised the top income tax bracket back up to 74%. Instead, it's right now 3.4% functionally for, for billionaires. Uh, when George Bush and Dick Cheney sold us on the naked lie that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, they believed it was true because Reagan illegally sold those things to Saddam. He had no idea. You know, Bush and Cheney had no idea that uh, Saddam had simply used them all in the war against Iran. But what happens when politicians stop bothering with even a fig leaf of truth to justify giant world-altering lies? James Madison warned us about this in Federalist Number 10. Um, and, and really, the last time the Republican Party embraced outright lies in a widespread way like this was in the lead-up to America's participation in World War II as multiple Republican senators, representatives, and media figures were taking direct cash bribes and talking points from Hitler's intelligence service. <coughs> Excuse me. Rachel Maddow has documented this in Prequel, her book, Prequel, An American Fight Against Fascism, and her podcast, Ultra. And Franklin Roosevelt called it out. You've heard me play the clip over and over again. So, you know... Uh, I'm very, very concerned about this. Uh, you know, former Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger writing about this, uh, about how they're doctoring video of Joe Biden to make, a, to make it look like he pooped his pants or make it look like he's, you know, wandered off at the G7. I mean, these were all literally fake videos. I mean, they're real videos, but they've been cut and doctored and edited in ways that convey a message that is not true. And yet Fox so-called news and uh, right-wing media are constantly pushing these things. The last bastion of fact-checking is called the Stanford Internet Laboratory. And this is the group that has been doing great fact-checking on the Internet. <coughs> Excuse me, and it turns out that uh, as Stephen Miller's America First Legal sued them and Republicans in Congress are investigating them. And as the Washington Post reports, two ongoing lawsuits and two congressional inquiries into the observatory have cost Stanford millions of dollars in legal fees. Students and scholars affiliated with the program say they have been worn down by online attacks and harassment amid, <coughs> excuse me, amid the heated political climate for misinformation research. So basically, we don't have anybody seriously fact-checking, you know, anybody with great credibility seriously fact-checking on the internet any longer. So this is, this is, uh, what, what's the old saying? A real mess? <laughs> a, uh, uh, just a, a, a cluster, as they say. So what do we do? How do we deal with a political party that basically is basing most of what they do and what they say on lies? How, how possibly can we have a functioning democracy in an environment like that? I don't get it. And Well, actually, I do get it, and that's the sad part. Um, there, has to be, there has to be some way to push back on that. Oh, and also, you know, Congress has prevented now the, the White House, Republicans in Congress have prevented the White House from even talking to social media companies. Our intelligence agencies can't even warn them anymore. So... What say you? I'll be back with uh, with uh, a little more of the news of the day and your calls. Just the Tom Hartman program.